Hello there. I'm going to call Bat BB. Bat BB, you can come up. Yes, come see Mummy. Oh, so tired. Because we had a big day today, didn't we? Oh, so much running and so much fun. So much running and so much fun. I'm going to take this camera. Hello. Hello there, sweetie. <laughs> That's a nice girl right there. Yeah, isn't that a nice girl? Yeah, I love this girl. Hi. Hi. He's nice. Nice. <laughs> oh, Smelly the hat. Hats are a little weird for that, aren't they? We had a busy day though today. Didn't we have a busy day? He was tired. Yeah. I can always tell when Bat's really tired because her legs kind of get a little shaky. <laughs> like her back end will just be like, oh, I can't run anymore. You have to understand, she runs on a 100 acre farm. Like it's not me taking her for a walk on a leash. Um, she doesn't do leashes. <laughs> Bat just runs <laughs> as fast and as low. Like she's very much border collie. She's got some other stuff in her, but she's very much border collie. So she does that really low, low run to the ground. And as fast and as long of a distance she can until she has to find out where I am and then bolt all the way back. <laughs> and she loves her T-O-Y. We're not going to say that right now, <laughs> are we? No. Uh, it's just a rope <laughs> that she just loves. So welcome to the 31 Days of King Juggernaut New York City. I'm Karen Stever and every day I'm releasing a puzzle piece until Halloween which I will show you the whole cover of this book that I have been writing for a long time that goes with the Idiot Savant CD. CD. Uh, today, speaking of this CD, I am talking about magpies, and it is chapter 17 of 20, so we're getting really close. Uh, the name of the chapter is Magpies Raid the Penny Arcade, and you probably, if you do have the Idiot Savant CD and you pay attention to lyrics, you might recognize the magpies raid the penny arcade and then the lyric of a uh, stealthy uh, stealthy dame glazed him with the raspberry face <laughs> kind of think about my own lyric <laughs> your singing filled the air like a concert grand piano yeah that's yeah it's from virtuoso yeah so uh that is what i'm going to talk about today is the magpies i love magpies um they're just so fantastic so i'm going to recap for you the drones. So there's three types of drones. There's the opera drones, which fly. So the magpies fall under that category. There's the um, jester drones, which are the silly kind of land creatures. A toad or um, an iguana might fall into that kind of category. And the ghost drones I talked about in a video called, um, I think I, did I call the video the orca? Or did I just talk about orcas and the video was called something else? <laughs> Oh, I've done so many of these now. But I talked about the orca, and the orca is a ghost drone. So the magpies are opera drones. They're part of the Air Force. Um, and I will read. Uh, okay, so just maybe I should recap uh, Jagannatha. So that is the rescue headquarters in this book, where anytime there's an animal that needs rescuing, they go to the Jagannatha. And say, for instance, if they lost their... Um, their wing, then they would have a new wing put on, but it's kind of metal or a metal plate on their face or something. Hey, Bat Baby. Yeah, sometimes you sniffy stuff that I don't know what you're sniffying. This room's a disaster, so. She's good, though. She doesn't chewy or eat anything. Um, but Jagannath is a headquarters where all these animals are rescued, um, and the magpies make up the uh, part of the Air Force, which is which is uh, the opera drones. <laughs> so I will read today from Magpies Raid the Penny Arcade. This is in New York. The kids are on a mission there. I won't talk too much about what that mission is. You can read the book like everybody else. <laughs> and uh, uh, snooty. <laughs> and I will read from page uh, 332 to 333 here. So this is, uh, the kids are in New York. They are at um, a zoo, and they're trying to figure out how to get some of these animals out of the central zoo. 
The last cage before circling back to the grand entrance was the monkey house. <laughs> Inside was a blonde, white-handed gibbon, and white cap was sad watching him swing. The sign said, Booza the Great. When I talk to you about White Cap, who's that little white capuchin monkey, he, he becomes very good friends with Booza, who's this gibbon, this little blonde gibbon. He was an aerial acrobat who didn't have enough room to meet his full potential, but was singing a lovely little song. And Katie, remember I talked to you about Katie, she's parked herself up beside White Cap. She parked herself, she has, she's in a wheelchair at this point in the book, and so she parked herself up beside White Cap. I guess I won't be swinging like that anymore, Katie said, quite teary. White Cap jumped back into her lap and wiped her face. What you'll learn about White Cap is he's so full of compassion and love. Then he grabbed each side of her hands and swung them back and forth in a seesaw motion. You need to get him out of there, Cap, or he could help us, right? Katie said, looking around for Ian. We better keep up with Ian. He has the compass. I told you about that spider compass that guides Ian to where he's going, much like this spider in my head is guiding me on my adventures. They hurried off to catch up with him. He had already marched outside and was looking up at the dark funnel of cloud, dark funnel of birds above. As Katie and Whitecap joined him, a black figure flew down with something shiny. It's Houtini, Katie said with a big smile, and Houtini was the smallest crow in the opera drones. He's known as the black-billed pickpocketer of the group. It looks like he has a key for us, she said with her hands out. Got it, thank you, love. And that is uh, one of the, one of the magpies, one of the little black and white crows that came down. Um, so uh, I, I love, love, love the magpies because uh, the Air Force here, they're very silly, like they kind of grab tarts and hurl them at people and stuff like in a very you know where I got kind of the um the vibe for like when they kind of do a New York takeover or when they go on some of these adventures is if you ever used to watch the little rascals or our gang um there was a scene that had always stuck in my head where um a bunch of animals were being transported by train somewhere but it was one of those trains where you know they they can sleep on the train, so they each everybody has their little bunkers there, and so the animals would be um, kind of, you know, in their own compartments or whatever. But then they'd get out, and then the chaos would ensue. <laughs> so it'd be a little bit nuts. That's kind of the vibe I was going through. This is 1939, and I was just like, you know, I want I don't want animals to be have voices like some of the movies you see, where you know you get a celebrity to come and voice them for the movie role. I don't want them to have human voices. I want them to be animals. Um, and animals, much like, say, for, for instance, monkeys, like Booza and Whitecap, you'll see through the book that they're really just, like, they're monkeys. <laughs> and they're, they're busy being kind of crazy and doing kind of monkey-type things. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, that's the magpies. Um, but I, of course, like, even though I don't want them to have voices, they're, they're still going to be extraordinary. I mean, it's not every day you're going to see an orca with one half of its whole face or its dorsal fin um, completely uh, renovated with metal. <laughs> They're renewed. They're bigger and better than before. And they have fake mission to go on, which I'm excited to share with you. So that is Magpies Raid the Penny Arcade. Um, there's, a, there's a line in the song where when I'm talking about their singing filled the air like a concert grand piano, adding their own unique soprano to the alto of the seagulls, isn't that beautiful? That's in the song Virtuoso from, um, from Idiot Savant. And that line, isn't, isn't it beautiful, is, um, it's throughout the book you'll see, I write it in bold. It was beautiful once. I believe it was beautiful once. He, I'm talking about articles of clothing, about an old car or whatever, and it's just I always add on that little. And I believe it was beautiful once because, um, you know, I, I believe that our lives were intended to be beautiful. The the, the um, original intention for us was to, to live in a beautiful way. And I want to get us back to that place. And if we can remember... If something was beautiful, it can be beautiful again. And if we did play at one time, we can play again. 
If we were happy at one time, we can be happy again. I believe that. And I want that for you as well, to be able to get back to the playground. And I hope this book inspires you to do that, okay? So I hope you'll grab your copy and I will sign it and ship it anywhere in the world. Um, and I also have these bookmarks. It's got a copper elephant in the top. They're hand painted. This is an American flag because it's King Juggernaut New York. I'll probably make bookmarks in the future. I sign it on the back that have uh, other flags and stuff on them. Okay, have a great night or a great day, depending where you are. And I'll chat with you really soon. Bat, you gonna come say goodbye? Come here, Bat. Come on. Come on up. Come on up. Yes, yes. She's not doing it. No, she's not doing it. How about this? Wake it. You wake it, Mimi. Thank you. At least you sort of say goodbye. Bye, guys. Talk to you soon. Rock on.